Did you want to know how to use your GoXLR's faders to control the output of a device not connected to the GoXLR itself? Do you want to know how to duplicate the GoXLR's output to one or two devices and switch between them as needed? Then keep watching because I'm going to show you how. Hey guys, welcome to Gamer on the Rocks. My name is Martin Weber. First off, I wanted to publish a video to YouTube. That might be helpful or it might be a hindrance. Either way, it's cool. So I'll go over one way that works. There could be others, but this is the first and easiest way that I came across. If you want to find some others, then you can go look for them yourself. I will just note that the Windows listen to this device checkbox solution is actually terrible because the latency is, is off the charts. First off, why would you even want to do this? Well, for one, it's just cool. It just feels cool using those faders. And I'm not a DJ. Point two is that I've got a wireless headset. It's this SteelSeries Arctis 7, which is an awesome headset, by the way. I highly recommend it. Now this receives its audio signals from my PC via its own USB transmitter. And if I wanted to re receive the GoXLR output, I would actually have to additionally connect that wireless transmitter into the GoXLR via the three and a half millimeter analog output, which isn't a huge deal, I know, but I've already cable managed my setup. It's all perfect. It's super neat and tidy. You know, once you get it perfect, you don't really want to mess around there again. The other thing that irks me about that setup is that if I did connect that analog output to the wireless transmitter, I'm pretty sure that the wireless transmitter unit itself would convert the analog signal to digital via its own analog to digital converter, then transmit that over its own proprietary wireless connection to the SteelSeries headset. And then inside the headset, it will have its own DAC to convert those digital signals back to analog for my ears to hear that. Now, that's just wasteful and it will be destroying quality along the way. Uh, it's just It just irks me. Okay, point number three. When I'm not multiplayer gaming or streaming where I'm using my mic, I actually prefer to use my speakers and they're connected to my Sabre DAC, which is an exceptional DAC. It's much better than the DACs inside the Go XLR. As it's a DAC, it only takes digital inputs, but it's already hooked up to Windows. Finally, did I mention I like using the faders? Okay, so what is the solution? Well, one simple solution is just to use voice meter to duplicate the GoXLR's broadcast stream mix to multiple devices. It's as simple as that. There is one major drawback to this setup though. There will be some added latency. So we better test that and see how much it actually is. All right, enough talking, let's get to it. First, go to VB Audio's website and grab the voice meter software. It's free for personal use. You can choose the base voice meter, banana or potato. The difference is primarily in the number of inputs and outputs. You can see potato has many more inputs and outputs. For my purposes, the base is enough for me, which provides two simultaneous outputs. Once you've got it installed, this is what you see. There are the inputs on the left, a virtual input, and then the hardware outputs. We only need to use one input, the GoXLR's broadcast stream mix. What you want to do here is select the WDM broadcast stream mix, not the MME. The MME one is based on a super ancient Windows audio subsystem and will include a higher latency. Just make sure this is being routed through bus A as it will be used by the hardware outputs. Then we go to the hardware outputs. In here, just select the devices that you want to output to. For A1, I've selected my Xsabre Pro MQA DAC. And for A2, I've selected the SteelSeries Arctis 7 game headset. Now I've chosen the kernel streaming options as they will have the lower latency out of the options here. So what this will do is simultaneously output the broadcast stream mix to both my DAC and to my headset. That's it. Once you've done this, you should be able to play some audio output and you'll hear it via your chosen devices. And on top of that, the GoXLR faders will work. Now, all we need to do is optimize the latency. 
go to menu and then settings and you'll see this panel pop up. First, the most important thing to do is align the sample rates of the input and output devices. You can see the broadcast stream mix is set to 48 kilohertz. I've got my DAC set to 48 kilohertz as well as my headset. If there are any differences here, it means voice meter has to do some maths to convert the different sample rates so that everything stays in sync. So how do you update the sample rate? Go to your Windows sound panel. And what you wanna do is select your device, click properties, go to advanced. Here you can see the supported sample rates of your device. You can also see the bit depth. Ideally you wanna align those two, but it's not as critical. So select the common rate, press OK. Go to your next device. Do the same thing. Look at the supported rates, select the common rate, save it in. That's step one done. You've got your sample rates all aligned. Step two is to set your engine mode to swift. Can be set to normal or swift, swift will lower latency. Step three is to reduce your WDM and kernel streaming buffers to as low as possible where it still works and you don't get any audio glitches or corruption. In my case, I had to set it to 192 samples to avoid audio corruption. Then optionally, we've got this WDM input exclusive mode. Now, we're using the WDM subsystem to capture the broadcast stream mix in voice meter, which then routes it through and duplicates it to these devices. You could set this to yes, but then it means only voice media will be able to access the broadcast stream mix, which is okay if nothing else is accessing that. However, if you are streaming via OBS, most likely you will be using that as um, an input to OBS. So I have to set it to no for this to work. If you can set it to yes, it should lower latency further. But then that's it, you're done. What's remaining now is to test how much latency is being added by this additional routing. With what I have, I can only do a rudimentary test I use my camera at 60 frames a second to capture a 60 frame a second test clip that has a synchronized light and sound loop. This is what the clip looks like. When I capture this with my camera at 60 frames a second, I'll be able to then bring it into Premiere and count the number of frames it takes for the audio sound to be heard by the mic and see at what point the video frame is at to judge how much latency is being added into the process. Here's the clip I've recorded with my camera loaded into Premiere. When I hit zero, this is where the light signal occurs. The audio beep comes at the same time, but we can see by the audio waveform, it hasn't actually been captured at this point where the signal was first triggered. So if I count frame by frame, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So 80 milliseconds of latency is added in my case. Your case may vary depending on your hardware and software setup. So 80 milliseconds latency is added to the audio signal. For normal system use, it's fine, it's unnoticeable. For monitoring of your mic pickup, it's not ideal, but it's not completely unusable either. It definitely could be better. For casual gaming, it's completely fine. For super competitive gaming, you definitely don't want this additional lag. You know, 80 milliseconds is quite a lot compared to the typical gaming monitor these days, which is probably around, I don't know, five milliseconds or so. Um, but when you put it together, you've got your visual cues coming from your monitor, then you've got your audio cues coming through your headset or whatever. And let's say that's delayed by 80 milliseconds. It's, a, it's only half of the equation. You're still getting your visual cues. So it's definitely not something you want. It really probably depends what level of competitive gaming you're doing. You'll have to try it yourself and let me know in the comments. Since I'm a washed up gamer, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I hope someone out there finds this useful or interesting. If that was you, please like this video and share it with others. 
Subscribe to my YouTube channel as I may make more content in the future. You can also find me occasionally streaming on Twitch. Check out the links below. Until next time.